Well, that is, so what, what you're saying is if we keep holding on to what we have and, we, and our hands are closed with what we think we know in the, the old normal and we don't release that to God, he can't get anything back into our hands. And that is so He's true. He's trying to get new wineskin. Yeah. Okay, and we're, we're bucking it yeah. because we, we, we haven't done this before and we're saying, well, we just need this, we just need that. No, God is saying, I'm trying to make a 90 degree turn in the church. Yeah. Yeah. And really the leaders of our churches, pastors, elders, board members, they have got to be willing to let go yeah. and say, God, we don't care about attendance. We don't care about money. Okay, now some people just fainted. We don't care about what we look like. We just want what you want. And if we can get there to the place where we only want what God wants, then we can see something supernatural happen. Yeah. We're going to oh. miss it if we try to do what we've always done because we're going to get what we've always gotten. As you're speaking just now, I, I, I believe I've got a God thought. Opportunity. Opportunity is a living thing. Opportunity is a... If you can, if you can imagine opportunity as a living organism, that, that, that it's alive, so it, it, will, it will materialize somewhere. I was watching news this morning and um, UPS uh, uh, had, a, had a terrible situation on, uh, on um, Cyber Tuesday because all of the companies that they had contracted with to deliver packages for, all of the, all of the com companies exceeded their contract numbers. And UPS could not deliver the packages that were being ordered by the public because, the, because online shopping has now exploded. And UPS has lost uh, money on the stock market today because they, they were unable to capitalize on an opportunity. They never saw the opportunity. So what happens is that, that this, this thing called opportunity, that's a living part of your world. Pastor, it's a living part of your church. And it will materialize somewhere. If you don't give it a, a, a home to, to exist and thrive in, it will go down the street and find someone else that's looking for opportunity and values opportunity and will implement opportunity. And you'll be sitting stuck in an old mode doing the, old, the same old thing that wasn't working before pandemics and certainly isn't working now while a kid down the street seeing the opportunity. Zoom, for example. Zoom was unheard of, didn't exist until everyone had to stay home. And suddenly this company, the opportunity came knocking at its door and it has exploded. I think it's like three or four times its value on the stock market because people recognize that this is a new way of living. They're telling me now that the brick and mortar stores, the stores, Sears and JC Penney's and all these stores that have always been there in the shopping mall, their future is dim because opportunity has realized. We need a, in my house, we need a smoke, a new smoke detector, a hardwired smoke detector. And um, so my son Andrew came in and says, Dad, we need to go, you know, we need to go up to Home Depot and get a, get a, a smoke detector. I says, nah, hold on a second. So I clicked on Amazon. I found one for $8 and I says, why don't I just order? It'll be here in a couple of days. And what's happening is the opportunity is making space for itself in a whole new dimension of life. And the church has got to understand that a crisis re represents or presents to us the opportunity to adapt and change. The message doesn't change. The answer doesn't change. But how we deliver it changes. Because if we didn't change, we'd still be working, um, going by donkey from one church to the other or trying to evangelize by preaching 20 times a day. Opportunity has allowed us for, for me to sit in Alabama, you to sit in North Carolina, and my mom can sit and watch us in Scotland all at the same time. That's opportunity. You know, the prophet Amos, in speaking to Israel, he said, I caused it to rain in one place. And I caused it not to rain in another. Wow. And the place where it did not rain. What is scripture? 
Oh. And what God is going to do, and this is why we need to be sensitive to the voice of God, Jesus. is that you could have one place, pastors, listen, you can have one church with a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit and another church five miles down the road that has died. And the only difference between the two is whether or not they listened to the voice of God and did the necessary shifts changes being sensitive to god and do what he's asking to do right now wow. there are story. churches Philip, that are not going to come out of this i know and the reason is because they are stuck in old models in old ways and really one of the key things and and we've got like six things that we're looking at and one of the key things is this Emphasis on prayer, and I will tell you that prayer is given lip service in the body of Christ. Yeah. Find me, though, a place that can be called a house of prayer. No, we might no. spend two or three minutes praying in the worship service. God wants our families. He wants our ministries. No. And he wants our churches to become houses of prayer. Not just teaching on prayer, preaching no. on prayer talking about prayer, reading about prayer. And what I've told pastors is stop preaching. Don't preach every week. Designate each certain Sundays when today's a prayer service. Yeah. I, I will be honest with you. When we started doing this here, when we came back into the building, people would call the office and they wouldn't leave their name, but they, they'd talk to my admin or secretary or something and they'd say, when is Pastor Mark going to get back to preaching? We just want him to get back to preaching. And they'd ask, well, who can I ask who's calling? And they'd hang up. And the reason <laughs> that we have a difficulty shifting is because you have to actually do something if you're going to pray. You yeah. can't sit there and listen. You have to participate because prayer is actually a participatory process. You have Absolutely. to do something in order yes. to pray. And, and our worship services are very one-sided. You come in, you sit down, everybody in front of you does everything. You don't have to do anything and you can go home. Absolutely. If we're going to have revival, we must come back to the place of prayer and repentance. Now, of course, I'm still preaching, but not necessarily every week. I don't need to. I don't feel like I need to. Mm. And I thought the Lord said to me a few weeks ago, more of you doesn't mean more Jesus. And uh, <laughs> that's a hard realization. <laughs> yes, it is. You're killing me. And, <laughs> yeah. More of me doesn't mean more of Jesus in a worship service. That's so amazing. more of my presence, more of my preaching, whatever I'm doing, doesn't mean more of Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm not true. the center of attention. Jesus is the center Absolutely. of attention. That's amazing. And we must call our churches to prayer and repentance yeah. and get the mind of God. Is your church a house of prayer? That's the question. Yeah. Is your family a house of prayer? Is your ministry a house of prayer? Yeah. And if it isn't, what do we need to do to make the shift? Regardless of what anybody has to say or the complaints or somebody that says, well, I'm going to leave. Let them leave. Do we want the presence of people or do we want the presence of Jesus? Jesus. Because there's an entire generation, and we're seeing this right now, right here. There's an entire generation of young men and women that want the supernatural. They want engagement. They yeah. want the gifts of the Spirit operating in their life. 70% of the millennial generation has had a supernatural experience but it's been with Ouija boards, witchcraft, and other things. And the reason it's been in those forms of, of the supernatural is because we shut it down in the church. We said, we're not going to do tongues interpretation on Sunday morning because it might run people away. We're not going to give prophetic words. Wow. We're not going to operate in the supernatural. And these no, kids in our church, they were hungry for it. They yeah. wanted it, and so they went looking for it somewhere else. And I'm telling you right now, not on my watch here. 
We're going to open up the door to the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and if deliverance has happened in a worship service, we, we desire it. We want it to take place. Yes. Mark chapter 2, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. And a man cries out. He's demon possessed. He had been there for years in the synagogue, but nobody ever knew he was demon possessed. He had a spirit yeah. of religion wow. and he was sitting there in the pew and there was so much power in the room with Jesus. It manifests and notice what the demon says. Why have you come to interrupt us? Okay. God wants to bring an interruption, but we like our churches the way they are. We Takes like our presence. music the way it is. Yeah. We like our preaching the way it is. And the devil doesn't want anything interrupted. I say, let it get messy, let it get nutty, let it get crazy, but let it be a God interruption. If you yeah. want everything all neat and fine and packaged, it may not be God. 